Lieutenant Junior Grade Christy Salzman of the U.S. Coast Guard District 13, and I will be telling you a little bit about our Citizen Action Network. This program allows civilians, as well as retired and current active duty military, to help the Coast Guard in our own missions. It takes time for our units to get from their base to where an incident may occur, and by having this network, it allows us to have eyes on the scene within minutes. As you can see on the screen, all of our members are designated by different colored boxes. There are red boxes, which we're just getting a few of, and they're Canadian assets. And the blue boxes are Coast Guard Auxiliarists and Active Duty Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard Auxiliarists are volunteers within the Coast Guard system. They wear a Coast Guard uniform, however, they do this as a volunteer. Also, we have the green boxes, which are regular civilians, and we're just starting to add a few businesses here in the Puget Sound, and they will be our black boxes. When something happens here at the command center, and we know the location, we can bring up the map that you see here, zoom in on it to the exact location of the incident, and pick one person or several people we would like to talk to. They can then go look out their window, or perhaps drive a few minutes if they're willing, and tell us what they see to help us have a little better view before our assets can get there. Also, if people are at home and they see something happening outside their window or on their property, they can give us a call. Citizen Action Network actually began as the Northwest Watch Network within the Coast Guard's 13th District here in Washington and Oregon. It started out as a local program, but with our volunteers' help, we've proved to the Coast Guard that it's worked superbly. So it has now become the Citizen Action Network and is being moved throughout the entire Coast Guard and the entire United States. Over. Uh, I'm with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, located here on Anderson Island. And I'm Bob Lighton. I live on Anderson Island, and I'm a member of the U.S. Coast Guard Citizens Action Network. And this is my location, and the Coast Guard has me on a map in Seattle at this current latitude longitude for my location. About seven or eight years ago, I decided to uh, expand the Coast Guard Auxiliary's presence here on Anderson Island. I had a bunch of friends who seemed to be interested in doing something and participating in some of the activities that I was involved with. So um, I recruited Bob Lydon here and about eight or ten other people over a period of three, four years. My decision to join this program goes way back to 1984, really. Uh, my brother-in-law, in January 1984, him and his friend went out in the East Channel of Lake Washington in, in a small boat to fish and the boat was overturned either by a passing vessel or it just tipped over. Um, three residents on the shore at the time called 911 to get them to respond to the scene. Apparently after being in the water for approximately 45 minutes, my brother-in-law finally they righted the boat and got his friend into the boat. And um, he tried to swim to shore and the residents saw him drown. In, in their vision when they were watching them through the binoculars. His friend was rescued and his friend I think was in second or third stage hypothermia and he recovered. And I always thought about how a program like this could be developed but I had no way of um, setting up a program like this and it wasn't until Mike introduced me to the original program that I thought this was just the thing that would assist the Coast Guard and other law enforcement agencies in their search and rescues and possibly saving lives in the future. Something typically that a member might be involved in is possibly out here on the sound where we're looking right now, uh, somebody might report that there's a boat on fire. It could be at dusk or maybe just after dusk. And what Bob here could do with his pair of binoculars or his telescope is go ahead and take a look for the Coast Guard rather than send a, a vessel all the way down from Seattle. He can take a look out here and determine that, well, I see the vessel and it appears that they're barbecuing on the back of the boat and they're creating a little bit of smoke. 
and that saves the Coast Guard sending a helicopter down from Port Angeles at approximately six to seven thousand dollars an hour, and it also saves dispatching vessels from Seattle, which could be two hours away. And the, the importance of this program is the Coast Guard can be on the spot with visual response from an individual member within minutes after the incident is reported and not hours and they can see exactly what's going on to get the Coast Guard resources best used for this type of response. Accidents occur with people that are unprepared. They don't have the portable marine radios with them or a built-in marine radio on their vessel or they don't have a cell phone or if they do have a cell phone and the vessel um, starts to sink, they have um, very little time to get out a message and what they do is they usually call 911 and get a, you have a geographic area, then they get in the water and their cell phone no longer works. And uh, what is the Coast Guard supposed to do? Well, now they can call individual citizen at their um, locations to verify exactly what's going on in the water with these people that have just been involved in a boating accident. And then the Coast Guard can either dispatch their resources or get the local law enforcement or fire departments to the scene quicker instead of spending hours trying to find the location where this call came in. incident that I really got involved with close to the beginning of this program was when a Russian freighter pulled into Amsterdam Bay where I live on the other side of the island. Uh, it was a large red vessel. We were out framing our garage and all of a sudden the ground started shaking and we looked up and here's this huge Russian freighter trying to come in our bay and it wound up on top of a, a spit at the end of the bay. So after a few gasps and a little frustration, I ran into the house and of course I called the Coast Guard, I had their direct number and I reported the vessel. And it's very easy to join this program. You just have to go to their website. The program website has a download application that you can actually fill out and mail back into the Coast Guard. And then it also has a manual in there, a citizen's guidebook explaining exactly what you can do as a member of this program. It takes you through identifying oil spills, it takes you through suspicious activity that you might want to report, and it um, takes you through what the Coast Guard wants from you when they call. One other aspect that we're recruiting members from right now is that there's a number of beach watch organizations. Washington State University has a beach watch organization up in Island County, and there's numerous other beach watch groups that we're trying to work with now to enlist their members into our program as well and we could work in a coordinated effort with these other beach group and Washington State University organizations. As you can see from the chart, we have quite a few members in the Puget Sound area. However, we would love to get more members along the coastline of Washington and Oregon and along any major river, specifically the Columbia River. Whereas you can see, we do have a few personnel, but not very many. And along the Oregon coastline, we hardly have anyone. It would be great help to the Coast Guard to get more people involved in this program. Our Citizen Action Network won an award from Secretary Chertoff of the Homeland Security. This is the Secretary's Award of Excellence, and it's all due to the volunteers of this program. And I would like to thank you for coming along on this little journey through the Citizen Action Network.